welcome. My name is Lexi Jong, and here I like to talk about luxury makeup. Today we are doing the 21 questions makeup tag from Ali Glines, and I was tagged from Allison Chase, so thank you for tagging me. And let's go ahead and get started. Number one, what is the oldest makeup product in your collection? And I am not 100% sure what my oldest item is. I think it might be this Cogendo natural lighting powder, which I act, I love the actual product. I think it performs really well. It's just too dark for me. You can see how deep this is. So yeah, it just kind of sits here and I use it sometimes. I'll mix it with some other powders and so forth, but it's, yeah, I honestly, I, I should declutter it, but I just never do. <laughs> and then I also have this Chanel quad. I know this was from 2016. So I think this is more recent than the Cogendo powder, but I'm not positive. This is Empreinte du Désert, which was a limited edition quad back then. And I love this. I think it's my favorite. So there's that. But if we're looking at my favorite makeup or my oldest makeup related item, that's actually this brush. So when I was 13 or 14, I had read in a magazine article that you could use paint brushes in place of makeup brushes and it was a cheaper option and you know I wanted makeup brushes I had no money and so I went to Michaels or MJ designs at the time I think it was maybe and I bought a bunch of paint brushes this is the only one that I still have from there but I still use it this is from American Painter it's 4500 filbert Teclon brush and this is my go-to concealer brush when I have a blemish so actually I had bad skin for many years. I had a lot of issues and one of my favorite things to do is I would use this brush and I would take a, it was a mineral eyeshadow that is no longer made, but it was a pale yellow color and I would swirl this in here and swirl it on my blemishes and then proceed with my makeup and it just made a huge difference so even now whenever i have like a blemish or spot concealing that i want to do this is the brush i reach for and yeah i mean it's really old now <laughs> it's still holding up just fine number two what is your most recent makeup purchase <sighs> i am not i'm not sure <laughs> but this is one of them. Um, I just received this. This is the Dior Forever Cushion Powder and I purchased the Lavender Shade. Now it comes in this gorgeous cushiony compact. You've got a mirror inside, you have a puff, and then I purchased the Lavender Shade here. Now what I didn't know is, I didn't actually know much about this powder other than the fact that it was lavender. <laughs> and this is one of those like Hydro Wet type powders. So if you have used the Becca, I think it's the Becca Hydro Tint maybe, but it's one of those powders that's like got some moisture to it. So you put it on and it kind of like evaporates. It has that cooling effect on your skin. And I personally really like the Becca powder, but it's too dark for me unless they have now made lighter shades. But, you know, my friend swears by that and buys duplicates of that because it's so fantastic. So definitely excited to play more with this. I have already tried it on today and I'm liking it so far. In addition, I also purchased a few items for a special giveaway that is coming soon to my channel. They haven't arrived yet, so stay tuned to my channel for that announcement. I think it's gonna be a really nice one. Number three, what is the first makeup product you ever used? That would probably be the little Tinkerbell makeup that you use for little kids. I know I got that when I was really young, like preschool age, I always, so always very interested in makeup and really liked looking at it, particularly lipsticks. So I remember having my Tinkerbell makeup and I remember very clearly having one of my sister's friends come over for a play date and she got into my makeup and she used it. I was so upset because even from that time, I knew you shouldn't share makeup. You know, you don't share hair brushes, you don't share makeup. So I was completely distraught and had to get new makeup. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I've always kind of been a little picky about sharing makeup. I know some people do it, but you know, that's just kind of my thing. Number four, what is a makeup trend that you used to love, but now you hate? 
This is a really, really hard one. I thought about this for a long time. I can't really think of a real makeup trend that I absolutely hate, but one that I don't really do as much is the really dewy skin. When I was younger, I did the dewy skin all the time. Now I prefer less dew than I did back then because I feel like it just ends up looking greasy on me otherwise. So, you know, I think the level to which I use the trend, you know, has changed, but I don't actually hate the trend. I love the look of dewy skin. So I can't really think of something that I absolutely hate. Number five, what is a makeup trend that you used to hate and now you love? That would be bronzer. I stayed away from the bronzer trend for many years. Every time I tried out a bronzer, they were just too orangey. I didn't really care for the colors. But now I have found bronzers that work well for my skin tone, like the Gucci bronzer I have on today. I absolutely love them and I can see the benefit to using them. I don't use bronzer every day and I definitely always go in with a light touch because that's just my, my style with it. But I do really appreciate the bronzer trend now. Number six, what is your favorite step in your makeup routine. That is definitely lipstick. I feel like lipstick totally completes a look. It's so much fun to play with and I always leave lipstick for the final touch so I can get the color just right. I love mixing lipsticks. I just, I love the act of putting them on. I love, you know, I, if you look at the top of my desk, I have like 10 lipsticks sitting there. If you open the drawer, I have a bunch more. I just, I love them. I love changing them throughout the day. Even today, I have three different lip products on now. I'm, I just, I love lipstick. Number seven, what is a makeup product you can't live without? And I had to think about this one a lot, but I really think it is lip products. It doesn't have to be a lipstick per se, but even on days when I wear absolutely no makeup, I still wear like a tinted lip balm or something like that. So I just, I love having a little something on my lips. I love having the feeling of, you know, something smooth and emollient on there. And I love the little bit of color and life it, that it brings to my face. So lip products are something I can't live without. Number eight, what sparked your love for makeup? That's a really tough question and I'm not really sure what it is. I've just always loved the colors and playing with it. And I guess for me, I'm not a very artistic person. I would love to be, but honestly, I'm terrible with art. <laughs> so this is my type of artistic expression. And yeah, I think, you know, as a young child, I was always attracted to the colors and packaging and so forth. And honestly, that really hasn't changed too much. When I was really young, you know, some of my favorite cartoons, you've got Gem and the Holograms and Rainbow Bright, She-Ra and you know, just seeing like the colors on their faces and everything really always appealed to me. And I just always loved playing with it. Number nine, what is the worst makeup look you've ever done? That, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin there. I have so many terrible makeup looks. You know, I am definitely not an expert. Anytime I go ahead and try to play with, you know, things that I'm not comfortable with or, you know, techniques that are new to me, it usually ends up pretty terribly. I think one of the worst looks was actually recently the Tom Ford, what is it? You know, that black eye paint that came out with a bad ass quad. Um, I forget what it was, but it was like a lacquer. Yeah. I think it was a Tom Ford lid lacquer and it was black and it just really looked like I spread like black grease or tar or something on me. I kept smearing. It, it was terrible. That's definitely one of the worst looks I've ever done. <laughs> Number 10, what is your favorite makeup look you've ever done? And I don't know. I have a few favorites. Uh, one of my favorites is with the Chanel Empreinte Désert quad. You know, I absolutely love this and I would put this on, you know, kind of like lightly with an emphasis on the green with like a peachy blush and a light peachy lipstick. That's probably one of my favorites. This was pre YouTube. So I don't know, but I wore that like combination quite a bit. So that's probably like my favorite. Number 11, what is your favorite drugstore makeup product? 
You know, when I was younger, I loved drugstore makeup. I loved going and picking up like a ton of different lipsticks and different colors and things to try. But nowadays I just, you know, drugstore makeup has gotten a lot more expensive than it used to be. And, I, you know, I just, I prefer buying the luxury. So um, for me, when I go to the drugstore and I, I look at makeup now, I always gravitate towards the nail polishes. So that would be my favorite makeup product. 12. What is your favorite splurge makeup product? That is tough because pretty much all of my makeup items are considered a splurge, but I have two real contenders here. The first contender is this case from Guerlain. I have the one that came out for the holidays with the Guerlain B on it, and these are all, you know, hand placed crystals. So this was a, a very big splurge item for me and I just, it's always kind of a special place in my heart. So this is definitely one of them. And then another, just a current favorite of mine that, you know, was a splurge was the Burberry Essentials Glow Palette. My favorite is the Zero One, but I splurged and bought both of them and I love both of them. But, you know, I think those have to be up there. So those are my two top favorite splurge items at the current time. Number 13, what is your most repurchased makeup product? You know, uh, you might think it's lipstick, but honestly, I switch colors and everything so often that it's not. It's got to be mascara. I think that's probably the thing that I replace the most. You know, I'm pretty good about replacing mine every three to six months. And there are definitely some mascaras that I've repurchased many times. So one of them is the Burberry Cat Lashes. That was my go-to mascara for years. I absolutely loved it. And then the Chanel, La Volume de Chanel. So I think those two are probably my most repurchased. 14, what is your earliest makeup memory? Well, aside from the Tinkerbell incident, <laughs> then my next earliest memory would be when you know, I was kind of around the same age, slightly older, but I really, really wanted to wear makeup to school. And I wasn't allowed, as I mentioned, I started off in a Catholic school and we had a strict dress code. So, you know, my mom, she kind of got tired of battling me over the makeup and I remember she took me to the drugstore and she let me pick out a lipstick and it was a clear lipstick it had to be a clear lipstick so I could wear it as chapstick but I still was able to have makeup at school so I don't remember which brand it was I think I think it was Maybelline but that was my first you know one of my favorite makeup memories and I was six at the time I, I remember I was in first grade so yeah, that, that was, that was it. And then I was able to carry it in my little backpack and I was just so happy to have grown up makeup. Number 15, what is your favorite place to shop for makeup? That's a tough one. Um, if we're talking in person, I really have always enjoyed going to Nordstrom and going through the, the counters and so forth. You know, Saks is another place that I really like going to the makeup counters, but now, you know, staying home, online. I still like looking at their websites. I look like looking at Selfridges. I've been doing a lot of shopping though at a specific, um, you know, the specific brands. So like I've been ordering directly from Dior and directly from Burberry and places like that. So it's hard to say what my favorite place to shop for makeup is. Once upon a time it was Sephora, but I think now it's definitely going to be either Nordstrom or Saks because they have more of, they have a wider selection of the brands that I enjoy shopping for than uh, Sephora does. So, you know, I love shopping at all of them, but uh, yeah, I think it's gotta be Nordstrom or Saks. 16, what is the most underrated makeup product you own? And that is a really tough question, but I think overall Givenchy as a brand is very underrated. And I think they have some of the absolute best lipsticks. I really love their lipstick formulas. Uh, so I think they're up there. And then also the Prisma Libre powder from Givenchy. So 
I don't know which product is more underrated, but I, I think it's definitely one of those two. And I feel like with the La Rouge Deep Velvet lipsticks from Givenchy, they're getting a little bit more attention recently. But the Prisma Libra, you know, I, I feel like that's probably more underrated. So that would definitely be my pick for this question. 17, what is the most overrated makeup product you own? And for me, that is Charlotte Tilbury. <laughs> so, you know, I like some Charlotte Tilbury products. You know, I think the Airbrush Flawless Finishing Powder is nice. I like the bronzer, you know, I, but I, I don't know. The eyeshadow quads, I've had a couple of them. I actually only have one right now because I actually gave away some others that I had tried pre-YouTube to my friends. So yeah, I don't know. They, they just, they don't do it for me. Her lipsticks always kind of turn orange on me after a couple hours. So I, I feel like the brand overall is overrated in my opinion, just because they don't typically work well for me. Now that's not to say all of her products are, but the lipsticks I think are gorgeous. They don't work for me with my skin chemistry. So in a sense, they're overrated, but it's hard to say because they obviously work so well for so many other people. But the eyeshadows, you know, I always end up, they always end up looking kind of muddy on me. And I feel like a lot of the color stories are all just so incredibly similar. And just like Pat McGrath is doing this now with Divine Rose, Divine Rose everywhere and Pillow Talk everywhere for Charlotte Tilbury. So I feel like if I had to nail down one thing, it'd be the Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow quads. Now I haven't tried her, her more recent flawless filter eyeshadow quads. So this would be the other ones, whatever they're called. Number 18, what is a discontinued makeup product you wish would come back? And that has to be these Chanel Illusion d'Ombre eyeshadows. And in particular, this one, <laughs> Eight Patent, number 84. So I actually had all of them at one point. Now I just have a few handfuls of them left, but Eight Patent and Illus, I can't say, Illusoir, the, the purple one, those were my two favorites. Uh, Mirafique, which was like this black multi-colored shimmer one. That was another favorite. I want all of those to come back. So <laughs> I, I love them. And then at the same time that these came out, there was a nail polish that was kind of similar to this. And it had like a little bit of a color changing, like, I don't remember if it was a duochrome or a holographic effect or something, but I passed on it thinking I was getting it for my birthday. Didn't get it for my birthday and then it was gone, it was sold out. And that, I really want to come back because I don't even remember what it was called, but yeah, it came out back around the, I think it was in the Empruntu Désert collection. But anyway, that I definitely, oh, maybe it was before that actually. But <laughs> regardless, I want all of those items back so badly. I feel like, you know, Chanel made, this is such a great product. I don't understand why they discontinued it, but I wish they would bring it back. 19, where do you go for makeup inspiration? Um, you know, honestly, I find makeup inspiration everywhere. You know, I particularly love flowers and things like that. I look at catalogs of flowers all the time because, you know, I wish I had like gardens of wildflowers in my house and so forth. But unfortunately, my husband does not agree with me on what is attractive in a garden. So I have my way at the last house, but at this house, he's had his way with the garden. So unfortunately, you know, looking at different flowers like, you know, lilies and hyacinths and just if you actually look at the details on them, so you're not looking at them from a distance, but you see like the gradient of the colors and things like that. Tulips are my favorite. You know, they, that's probably my biggest place for inspiration would be nature in general. Uh, you know, I can look at a rock and see the different veining in there and it inspires me to think of something. Now, I'm not necessarily so great at recreating everything, but it is my main source of inspiration. But if I'm looking like online or something like that, yeah, it's probably going to be any sort of like nature type picture, um, like Aurora Borealis and, you know, different scenes from nature in general. 20, what do you hope to see less of in makeup's future? 
this, there are actually quite a few things <laughs> that I can name for here, but I would have to say that I would really like to see less of the speed at which these collections are coming out. It's like never ending. There's just new item after new item after new item, all from the same brand. It's too many items and I feel like they're rushing and the quality is decreasing. And, you know, on top of that, we have too many collections of repurchase items that are coming out. For example, the Tom Ford body heat coming out in the Lunar New Year packaging and the Rose Prick packaging as we already had it in the regular packaging. It's just, it's not necessary to have so many items come out that are repackaged. I can see doing it once in a while for like a special limited edition item or something like that. But I feel like we have too many instances where we are having the same product, whether it's permanent or a limited edition, but it comes back in different packaging every time. So I think that is just... Yeah, I'd definitely like to see less of that, less of these recycling of the same ideas. So, you know, less of the pillow talks and divine roses everywhere, you know, come up with some new color stories and inspiration and so forth and slow down the collections and make them a little bit more special. You know, there, there have been too many things that are just mediocre coming out and there's just too much hype over them. 21, what do you hope to see more of in makeup's future? There are a lot of things that I could put here, you know, that I would love to see more of as well. But I think one of the big things is going to be the attention to details all around. So that in, that's kind of like a broad, <laughs> broad answer here. But, you know, you're looking at inclusivity. You're also looking at things like packaging design. So I would like to see functional packaging with sustainable reusable packaging so things that especially in the luxury market we have such decadent packaging for things i would like to see them reusable and then actually having refills sold so i just contacted gucci about the gucci bronzer refills they're not making refills for that <laughs> i'm like what <laughs> so they they said sorry we're not making refills and yeah, so we've got that. We've got the Chantecaille cushion. These are both refillable items that I expected refills would be sold separately, but they apparently are not. And I'd, I'd like to see a lot less of that type of thing in makeup's future and more of the continuing to create these gorgeous compacts. Like this is a great compact. And I think I would love to see more compacts like this, but I also want to see the refills sold. So there's that, this whole idea of sustainability. So I know it sounds kind of crazy, but one of the reasons that I started my YouTube channel is because there are so many people who, like I live in the States where I can return makeup, but I don't like to return makeup. I kind of feel like once I buy it, that's, that's mine to, to keep, unless there was something like majorly misleading about it. But I thought about the purchase, I made it, so I keep it. And then I'll try to find somebody I know who, who wants it if it's something I don't like. But there are so many places where you buy makeup and you cannot return them and people kind of have to go in blind. And, you know, you do the best you can from reviews and watching YouTube videos and so forth. But one of the reasons I started this channel is actually in the hopes that I could help prevent some people from making mistakes because there, I didn't, I don't know. Maybe I wasn't looking at the right channels, but I didn't see too many people with my coloring and my makeup style, you know, reviewing products. So at least the ones that I was always looking for. So I ended up buying a lot of things and some things worked, some things didn't, but I wanted to save people from making some of the mistakes that I did and kind of figured it's better to have somebody with a ton of makeup that doesn't all get used versus a ton of people buying the same makeup products that they end up not liking and then don't get used. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense. That was part of my rationale. Not the not the only reason, definitely not my biggest reason, but it, it is a, an aspect as to why I started my YouTube channel. I hope this was enjoyable for you and you know, I would love to hear what your responses are to some of these questions. So please feel free to chime in down below in the comments with some of your answers. And I, in particular, I'd love to know what you'd like to see less of and more of in makeup's future. I think those were probably the two most thought-provoking questions, but they were really interesting. 
Uh, so please feel free to share them down below. This was a great tag from Allie Glines. Thank you again to Allison Chase for tagging me. And you know, I, I'm tagging anybody who's interested in doing this. So I know that's kind of a cop out, but <laughs> you know, I just, I think it's a great tag and everybody should have the opportunity to do it. So thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Don't forget, I do have a giveaway coming up soon. So make sure you pay attention for that and have a great day. Stay safe and healthy and I'll see you very soon.